Mobile RAN is the technology that connects your phone to the network. It includes the base stations, the antennas uh, that you see all around the place on, on towers, rooftops, lamp poles. As an equipment market, it's worth probably north of $30 billion a year, and it supports a trillion dollar market in mobile service revenue. At Heavy Reading, I'm currently leading a new research project on Open RAN. So this really refers to a set of processes and technologies that are going to uh, disrupt this market. That is to say, disrupt in a good way, not undercut R&D or investment, but really make it easier and faster to introduce new capabilities, new innovations in radio technology into the commercial network. And of course, support new use cases for different types of operator. To get a sense of what's happening, I interviewed some executives involved in a new operator-led initiative called the ORAN Alliance, uh, speaking directly after their inaugural board meeting in Los Angeles earlier this autumn. Uh, starting with uh, the CTO of AT&T and also the chairman of the ORAN Alliance. So the ORAN Alliance stands for Open Radio Access Network. And this is a new alliance we just created earlier this year that involves 15 global uh, telecom uh, mobile service operators. And we're really excited about this alliance uh, on a couple fronts. Uh, one is the mission of ORAN is to create a open uh, RAN architecture with open interfaces that will allow, uh, kind of think of it as sort of opening up a lot of the closed proprietary RAN architectures that we've had in the past. This gives us an opportunity to, uh, frankly, uh, disrupt and add a lot more competition into how the RAN is actually uh, designed and deployed. So we feel uh, those that adopt this architecture and these open interfaces will actually be building uh, many new opportunities to create different types of services as well as give them a more competitive options for how they build their RAN uh, networks of the future. So we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, good. I bet 15, 15 operators is a, is, a, is, a, is a big lift. It's influential. Um, competition's good, of course. How is it going to help kind of, I don't know, bring in some innovation and things like that a little faster into the, into the RAN? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned, it's an open architecture with open interfaces. So, what's happening here is we'll actually be uh, uh, producing and publishing a white paper that will explain the architecture here very shortly and we'll release that publicly. And this basically will define the various uh, modules, if you will, of the architecture as well as the working groups that we've structured around each of these modules that will define the open specifications that we desire. Now again, as I mentioned, this is all being done from a service provider perspective. Uh, whereas in the past, the RAN really has been driven by the suppliers. So this is very different. We feel that uh, with 5G just now beginning, that, that we are creating a, a great opportunity to get closer to the customer experience and to really have the operators define for the supplying uh, the supplier community what exactly we want and what's most important. That, therefore, that can then get pushed into the standards bodies, which then can get ratified, and then all uh, uh, suppliers can then adopt this and build toward it. Now, because it's open, that means we believe we're lowering uh, the entry barrier for new, innovative, and disruptive technologies to come in and take advantage of this. And that's really what we want, is we want to open this up and sort of break up um, some of, frankly, the proprietary uh, and supplier lock-in that's been there in the past. I talked to Telefonica, one of the largest mobile operator groups uh, worldwide, about the role Open RAN might play in their network strategy. Well, I think Open RAN is, uh, RAN is uh, an important element inside the strategy of uh, Telefonica, no? of uh, network transformation. Um, it's part of, uh, of our strategy and part of uh, our interest of moving the, the network to an um, open uh, software platform. No? Uh, open RAN will provide us uh, the means uh, to make it possible uh, by agreeing with the uh, industry partners, no? with other operators, with the manufacturers, with the chip vendors uh, and all the key uh, stakeholders in the mobile industry.
Well, I, I think we are now in, in the moment of defining those use cases, on defining the scenarios that we have to, we would like to cover with uh, Oran in a first step. Uh, but I think Oran is probably transforming the way the run is built uh, to the future. Uh, very likely we will start with a few use cases at the beginning uh, and later on uh, progress and, uh, with the rest. And how, how's the market reacting? How's your supplier base and, and, and all of that? How are, how are they taking it? Yeah, well, we are um, surprised to see the acceptance that is having, uh, surprised to have uh, big manufacturers uh, working to that, uh, with us uh, actively, uh, chip uh, manufacturers as well, uh, radio manufacturers, uh, operators. So we see a, a lot of engagement in the industry in general. So um, very positive in, in terms of the possibilities of success of Oran to the future. Orange was interesting. Note how Philippe talked about the need for vendors to really uh, much better support existing standards before uh, jumping ahead to the long-term vision. This is something I've heard a, a few times from Orange and I think it's important to underline. So Orange is present in 28 countries in the world and uh, we are very focused on deploying standards. Most of them are, and on the radio side, they are developed by the Free GPP which is the organization which is developing all the radio and mobile systems. Um, but even if there are standards, uh, we believe that uh, we need to expand the standards on areas where there are some interfaces well identified, for instance, but not sometimes very much followed by the vendors. And so uh, we'd like to open up a bit more and ensuring that the, st the, the interfaces that could allow us to open up more e areas and I would say equipments on the uh, access side would be much more followed uh, and that's something at least an area that we are very in interested to investigate. That's I would say a short term perspective. On the long term perspective we are also very interested to uh, look at things around virtualization of around activities and around functions uh, as it is something which is becoming more common in the industry and we believe that uh, discussing uh, with our peers ensuring that we have a I would say a global strategy will really fit the standards that will be developed across operators to ensure that we're going to have a scale uh, at the end of the day uh, and uh, avoiding fragmentation. So we think it's an interesting place to be, to uh, drive the innovation uh, on the access side and it does not really innovate but the radio interface for some time so we think it's a, it's a good uh, timing to, to move things forward. And the technology also is interesting to, to move our aspects as well. And then I asked AT&T if it was a, a mere co coincidence that 5G and Open RAN were coming at the same time. I think you'll see his answer is uh, pretty emphatic. 5G is not just a network evolution, it's a paradigm shift. For the first time we can apply virtualization, disaggregation into a wireless system and take advantage of two technology enablers that have been around for a while, which is software-defined networking and network cloud or edge. And by that we can, and Oran is actually helping us to take the wireless system that you can think about this as the first wireless system that was uh, built, born in the cloud, and start thinking about disaggregation of the function and creating open interfaces between the internal function of the run. And what this is allows us now is start thinking about this as a system that will apply software to a uh, software-defined networking, create new services, and deploy them on edge and uh, network platform which is pretty th pretty much the first thing that the first time that was uh, possible in our uh, in the wireless industry finally with Deutsche Telekom we link the idea of 5G to programmable RAN and you can start to see here the link with services and just how exciting this uh, new technology could be so from our perspective uh, when uh, we come to a point when 5G is being introduced and implemented we have the demand for very different services to be executed uh, over the same network platform. And in order to achieve that, uh, the platform needs to be able to expose itself and being able to uh, also accept commands from the orchestration and higher layers to basically support very different services across the same network infrastructure. And in that context, you need to be able to tell, to run, the net, to run part of the network, how to behave depending on what a service, what a service layer is expected to be delivered to a, to a customer. So it should be a customer-centric network using the programmability in order to achieve the characteristics that the services will require. So there you have it, Open RAN, it's a big deal and something we're going to be tracking heavily through 2019.